It was the fall of 2020. I was unhappy, depressed, and lost, not knowing what to do with my life after quitting my job in the US. Many people thought I was crazy for moving back to Vietnam and starting again. All I knew during that time was I wanted to travel and pursue a more meaningful life. So I decided to book a flight to Ho Chi Minh City and didn't know what to expect. I remember walking on Nguyen Huệ Street and seeing the colorful lights lit up at the unique cafe apartment. The locals were so happy and cheerful, and my senses were awakened by the delicious street food aroma. I realized that I was too busy observing and emerging myself in the hustle and bustle lifestyle that I didn't have time to be sad and lonely anymore. Saigon is changing so quickly and, in my opinion, is transforming into the New York of Asia such that many parts of the city feel like entirely different countries. Even though I was born and raised in Vietnam, I feel like there's so much to learn and explore in my own country. So I decided to go on a food tour to see Saigon in depth. Why the food tour? because it can tell you a lot about the area's history and how the locals live. Oh my gosh, I love your outside, it's so beautiful! Yeah, are you wrong? Yes, I am. My tour guide home with beautiful Alzai rode me on a traditional motorbike to every corner of Ho Chi Minh City. Everything seems so familiar, yet very strange to me. The heat, the traffic, the architecture. But one thing that I feel very connected with, and that's the first reason why I fell in love with Saigon, is the people. I would use three words to describe Vietnamese people. Kind, entrepreneur, and optimistic. Vietnamese people might not seem friendly at first, but when you have a drink with them, they consider you as a family member. Vietnamese people show love through food. They're willing to share or give you extra food to express their hospitality. Even when you're full, they don't stop giving love. Coming back, I almost forgot about the street vendors culture that I didn't see while in the US. In Vietnam, as soon as the people have the business idea, they can try it out and not get worried about being shut down. Like the kids in the US who cannot even run a lemonade stand without a permit. Unlike in first world countries with strict zoning laws, you can run businesses straight out of your house in Vietnam. If you want to start a coffee shop like this, you can just buy some plastic chair, ground coffee, condensed milk, and some cheap metal filter. Voila! Now you have a coffee shop! I can come in too. <laughs> Lastly, I feel proud to be Vietnamese because of our perseverance and optimism. The highlight of my trip was when Hong took me to Chot Zak, where people exchange second-hand items. And the Ngo Zat Tự apartment, where I see how people live there with under minimum wage. Do you know that the area under the stair? Uh, In the, front of us. Can you guess what it is? This area, this one. The dungeon? No. Basement? No. Where people hide weapons like in the war? <laughs> <laughs> you have a very imagination, but no. So honestly, it's a massive town for a family of four. And they just wow. put up some blankets wow. for privacy and have lived here for decades. So people live in there? Yeah, a family of four are wow. living here. 
So is it like downstairs or people live? So like they just use the space under the stair, very little and tiny, that high, and live here. So many people here, they're very poor. They cannot even afford a place to live. So they just use any space they can and to make the shelter from the rain and the sea. So whenever the entire family, they want to use the bathroom or they want to take a bath, they would have to use the public toilets nearby. Oh and my gosh. Her husband used to be a solo driver before they were mostly banned in the city. And now the entire family make a living by selling the chicken at the umbrella market that we went earlier. Where are they now? They're still living here. Oh wow. Contrast of a glamorous downtown area, there are still people living in trash houses, having small driveways for motorbikes, using shelves to hang their clothes, and no air conditioning in this hot weather. What shocked me the most was Hong used to live here before she became a tour guide. So you live here with 14 people in 30 years? Mm -hmm. Wow. When I was younger and then there were 14 people living together in this single apartment at the same time. So with that many people, there wasn't even enough room for everyone. Okay. So most of the time we just stay outside until it was time to sleep and then we oh. come home. Mm -hmm. wow. And with that many people, there wasn't even enough room for beds or mattresses. So uh, everyone just slept on the floor where there was room. And as you can imagine, like uh, sharing the bathroom with that many people in this little apartment was also a nightmare. I can't believe in the middle of Saigon, people still have squat toilets, peeling paint, and dripping water from the ceiling. What impressed me the most was Hong is not even complaining. She always has a smile on her face and keeps working for the better future. Little did I know, she's now a co-founder of EXO Tours, the first female tour operator in Vietnam, and it's the tour that I attended today. So Saigon is Vietnam's largest city and is also the main economic hub. That's why it attracts so many people from all other parts of Vietnam to come here and bring their culture and their food. That's why when you come to Saigon, you can find almost every type of Vietnamese food. And that leads to the second reason why I fall in love with this city, is the cuisine. The first dish Hong and I try was bánh thập cầm chiên, which loosely translates into fried cakes. There are three different types of fried cakes, taro, tapioca, and chives, in this one single dish. The cook mixes rice flour with vegetable of choice, the mixture is then steamed, cut into rectangle shapes, and then pan fried on very high heat to create a lightly crispy layer on the outside, while the inside remains soft and moist. The cakes are served together with fried eggs, shredded green papayas, and chopped green onions. Local people love this dish because it's so healthy and affordable. The second dish is baked tofu with seafood and assorted mushroom. Tofu, prawns, squid, and a variety of mushroom are wrapped together in tin foil and slowly baked in medium heat to bring out the sweetness. This sweetness is known as umami, the fifth basic taste that is highly rated in Asian cuisine. And since the ingredients are all mushrooms and seafood, this is a great healthy and yummy dish for a low carb diet. The dish originated from Nha Trang City and was made famous by TikTokers. This is one of the many perks that Saigonese have, to eat food from many other regions without having to go too far outside the city. The third dish is grilled goat meat. Vietnamese men love to have goat meat with their beers, and in fact, Vietnamese drink beer with ice. I guess it tastes better with goat meat because goat meat has mild aphrodisiac effects for men. Brass meat is marinated in fermented tofu sauce and Coca-Cola to make it softer, sweeter, and to help get rid of the strong smell of goat. Is it good? Okay, my turn. Hmm. It's not bad. <laughs> It's chewy. I don't smell the, the smell from the goat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But honestly, like goat bread, you consider the more expensive meat mm. and the lighter part of the goat. So the Stagoni, we only eat goat in some special event. 
Okay. If you know that like in uh, most of the local market, they don't sell gold because it's so expensive for them to sell. Oh. They have to go to very special market to get it. Mm. So what do you like the most about this job? Uh, the happy, the happy face of the customer right at, at the end of the tour. And then I feel like that I do something for the country, honestly. What? The last dish is a traditional Vietnamese dessert soup called chè. Vietnamese people love sweets, and chè is my favorite dessert too. I remember driving 30 minutes from my home to the Vietnamese market to buy a bowl of chè ba mo. Chè is an adaption of Cantonese cuisine sweet soups. The key difference is almost every version of chè is either cooked or served with coconut milk and can be served warm or with ice. This chair vendor has been open for more than 40 years and the current vendor is the third generation. Chè is a perfect dessert to get your energy to explore Saigon at night. I'm so glad that it's not a typical food tour where I only eat pho or banh mi, learning about politics and war. On a personal tour like this, I can better connect with the locals and understand my roots. I feel more grateful for what I have and fall in love even more with this city. Most people, both foreigners and overseas Vietnamese, come to Ho Chi Minh City because of its energy. And that's the third reason why I fall in love with this city. Every day, when I walk out the house, I see new restaurants, new people, and new opportunities. It's a city where the past meets the present, the chaotic traffic meets the harmonized flow, the mixture of Eastern and Western cuisine, traditional and modern architecture, busy and laid-back lifestyle, and it's a perfect balance of yin and yang. Saigon is where most Vietnamese expats live, which means you can find an incredibly diverse amount of international cuisine and culture here. There's Korea Town, a Japanese area, one of the largest Chinatowns in the world, and because Vietnam was once a French colony, there's a lot of French influence in the food and architecture. Ho Chi Minh City is known as a sleepless city. It is most beautiful at night. You can see people walking on the walking street with their kids or hands in hands with their lovers, enjoying and talking with street food vendors. Young people meet up and sit on the floor to chit chat and have good drinks. You can see a peaceful Saigon with many buildings under Tu Tim Bridge. The people, the scene, the food bring me joy and peace. And I'm so happy to call it home now. This video will not be done without the help of EXO Tours. Thank you so much for giving me a chance to explore my own country. EXO Tour is one of the first food tour companies in Vietnam with a mission to empower Vietnamese women and help more people understand Vietnamese culture. They offer the highest customer service, accident insurance for all guests, and provide valuable insight into daily Vietnamese life. Whether it's your first time visiting Vietnam or you are a long-time resident, the experiences that EXO Tour offer is very unique and authentic. They don't just run tours, they also share fascinating and touching stories so that you can connect with the people and the location you visit. So, if you want to experience a tour like this, I'm going to leave more information in the description box below. Or you can visit my website at whatthefallvn.com. Usually, this type of video takes a lot of time for me and my team. So if you like this video, don't forget to subscribe to my channel, like and share. Also, if you want to see Vietnam in a daily basis, don't forget to follow my social media at Van Vu from Vietnam. Alright, I hope to see you guys soon in Vietnam. Bye! To start a coffee shop, you can just buy some plastic chair. You can just buy some.